How many upsets will we see in week three? What are some props that you should bet on this week? All of that and more on this week's episode of Weekly Preview. Hi guys, I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism and welcome to the week 3 edition of Weekly Preview. If you're new to the channel, in this series I go over each game, some fantasy starts, some storylines, and overall predict all of the scores this week. Week 2 is slightly better than week 1 as I went 9-7, and seven, went 7-9 seven and nine against the spread, and actually perfectly predicted the upset of the week as I said Baltimore would beat Cincinnati 27-24. I'm not going to keep you guys for much longer, let's get into this preview. By the time this video goes up Thursday Night Football will have already happened. My score prediction for it is 31 to 9 San Francisco. The first matchup to talk about here is Tennessee going out to Cleveland. Cleveland is favored by three and a half points and the over under is set at 39 and a half. These teams are coming in different directions as the Tennessee Titans just beat the Los Angeles Chargers and the Cleveland Browns just lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tennessee was a win that I was not expecting but I honestly understand it given that they have such a great run defense and without Austin Eckler, the Chargers were forced to run with Joshua Kelly who was held to 39 yards. Their run defense has looked phenomenal up to this point, but their pass defense, not so much. Luckily, they have to play Deshaun Watson, who I'll discuss here in one second, but because of the pass defense, this offense needs to give the defense more time. Speaking of Watson, his career in Cleveland has been very disappointing to say the least. He desperately needs a blow up game, which he has not had yet. So it's safe to say that his contract could possibly be the worst in NFL history. If he can find that game, Cleveland is in luck. If he can't find it, this team is not a playoff caliber team. Neither is Tennessee, but I have them winning this one by a score of 20 to 17 going under the point total. This game is not the upset of the week, so stay tuned for that. A potential high scoring matchup as the LA Chargers face the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota is favored by one and a half points and the over under is set at 53 and a half. The Chargers lost to the Titans as I just mentioned and the Vikings just narrowly lost a game against a good team in Philly. This Chargers offense is booming, but without Austin Eckler, it could struggle immensely. This defense has been subpar all around, especially in pass coverage and and the coaching hasn't been great either. So who is to blame for this 0-2 start? I've seen blame thrown around everywhere, but I mentioned in my last weekly preview that Brandon Staley has a very hot seat, and that's where I throw the blame. This defense has a great pass rush duo and some good talents in coverage as well, but they haven't put up the results. So personally, I'm putting the blame on Staley. The Vikings, on the other hand, have a clear issue with their own defense. It's not the coaching here this time, it's actually the talent on the roster, as the linebacker group and the secondary are not great. Defensive coordinator Brian Flores is a great DC, or at least that's where he was at when he last coached. Hopefully he can develop this defense to some point of success this season. I'm expecting both of these quarterbacks to have big games this week, but I think the Chargers find their way to the win. Give me them by a score of 28 to 27, hitting the upset and going over the point total. Moving on, the Patriots and the Jets play in both of their second divisional matchups. Patriots are favored by two and a half points and the over under is set at 37. The Patriots defense kept their matchup close against Miami last week and the Jets can't say the same as they got killed by the Dallas Cowboys. I knew what to expect out of New England's defense this year. The pass rush has just been all right, but the run defense and the pass coverage have been great. Mac Jones is being heavily relied on right now as he has 96 pass attempts and a 68.8% completion percentage so far this season. Compare that to 40 carries from the running backs and it's very clear who is getting the volume in this offense. As for New York, they need to find a new signal caller or a new threat on offense. As for New York, they just need to find a way to win and that's going to start with finding a new quarterback. Zach Wilson did not look like that new and improved quarterback that I pointed out before week two. Even after the Aaron Rodgers injury, people were looking for potential replacements. So maybe it is time to bring in a veteran like Carson Wentz in free agency or Jameis Winston in trade. I was not impressed by New York's week two performance, so I have New England taking this one 27 to 14 covering the spread and going over the over under. Another divisional matchup here is the Texans travel out to Jacksonville to face the Jaguars. The spread is set at eight and a half towards Jacksonville and the over under is set at 44 and a half. Houston unsurprisingly started 0-2 as this whole team is still trying to catch on. 
Jacksonville just lost to Kansas City, which was a good matchup, but they did not look great. Let's talk about Houston first, who I actually liked coming into this season, but suddenly they've dropped seven spots to 30th in my power rankings. But it's because of these defensive performances they've been putting up. So they need momentum outside of them, and that's where Jacksonville comes in. Jacksonville lost 17 to 9 in Kansas City last week, and it wasn't as close as the score may show. So if they can capitalize off this, they may have a shot to win. Led by Trevor Lawrence, Jacksonville very much struggled last week to get anything going on offense. He wasn't that great in week two, and even week one, I wasn't a big fan of his performance. Outside of Lawrence, the pass catchers weren't great, the offensive line was iffy, and Evan Ingram was the only player I thought played well. Especially against a team like Kansas City, more than one player needs to step up. But I'm still confident in Jacksonville to take this one 24-10. Jacksonville covers the spread and goes under the point total. Buffalo travels to Washington in this next matchup. Buffalo is favored by 6.5 points, and the over-under is set at 43.5. Buffalo dominated the Raiders last week, winning 38-10, and Washington narrowly edged out the Denver Broncos 35-33, which the score should have been 35-27. The Bills took a loss to an Aaron rodgers list Jets team in Week 1, but they came back heavy in Week 2. They have so much momentum now. There's no doubt that this team is talented. I mean, they've been AFC contenders for the last Last few years but you have a quarterback like Josh Allen and while he's extremely talented his decision making is terrible sometimes so with Josh Allen this momentum could be ruined at any point as for the commanders they have a very intriguing team now their offense has seen some good and bad and the defense has been performing very well I know this is going to sound so weird right now but Washington has a good shot to win this game that I don't think will happen this week give me Buffalo 27 to 17 covering the spread and going just over the point total another seemingly lopsided matchup as Indianapolis travels to Baltimore at eight and a half point underdogs the over under is set at 45 and a half as well. The Colts took down a struggling Houston Texans team last week by a very significant score, and the Baltimore Ravens are coming off an upset of their own division rival in Cincinnati. Indianapolis has yet to be great, but they've looked somewhat good. Indianapolis has yet to look too good, but they've had flashes as a team, especially when they kept it close with Jacksonville in week one. They have pressure against a very competitive team, but they have an even bigger problem. Anthony Richardson is in concussion protocol at the time of this recording. So yes, while Minshew should not be understated, Indianapolis is going to miss Anthony Richardson if he's out week two. As for Baltimore, they originally started number three in my power rankings, but since then, they went down to number eight and have since gone back up to number six. I'm not surprised they've started 2-0. I predicted their win over Cincinnati, and obviously I knew they were going to beat Houston week one. But they have so much more than Indy does, so now they need to use that to capitalize off their win last week. Give me Baltimore in this one, 34-17, covering the spread and going over over the point total. Here we have another game that has the potential to be great. Atlanta travels out to Detroit with Detroit being three point favorites and the over under being set at 46 and a half. Atlanta is 2 and 0 coming off a comeback win over Green Bay and Detroit is 1 and 1 after losing to the Seahawks in overtime last week. Atlanta was my team winner of the week last week as while they didn't rise up my power rankings, they rose up 10 spots from week 1 to week 2. They have proven that almost everything on their team is legit. I want to center in on this defense yet again and I want to talk about if they can compete against a real test in Detroit's offense. Detroit was fifth in points and fourth in yards in 2022, and so far in 2023, they are 10th in points and third in yards. There's no doubt that this Detroit offense is good. Now we got to see if this Atlanta defense is good as well. We will see if they're worth the price tag this week. I'll stray away from this Detroit offense and talk about their defense, specifically an aspect where they have been the worst at this year. Detroit has struggled to pressure opposing quarterbacks on the inside of the line. Aiden Hutchinson is on track for 110 pressures. Charles Harris is on track for 60 pressures. But the guy with the most on the inside is a three-way tie with 17 pressures this season. Even if this pass rush can't get pressures, all they need to do is contain Desmond Ritter in the pocket, and I'm sure they'll be okay. This is the NFL. 
This game is my upset of the week as Atlanta takes down Detroit by a score of 27 to 24. Atlanta obviously gets the upset and they go over the point total. Moving into the back half of this preview, Green Bay takes on New Orleans this week. Green Bay is favored by one and a half points and the over under is set at 42 and a half. The Saints are 2-0 to kick off the year with wins over Carolina and Tennessee. Green Bay is 1-1 as they blew out the Chicago Bears but lost to the Atlanta Falcons. The Saints 2023 season was a season I was not particularly excited about but they've proved me wrong so far this year. The defense has especially shocked me and Dennis Allen has looked like a great head coach which shocks me even more. The pass rush has been great, the coverage has developed just as they wanted and even discussing the offense they've been good as well. So the hope is that they can continue their division lead. The other 2-0 NFL FC South teams do have tough matchups this week, and New Orleans not so debatably has the easiest one of the three. The Packers are an interesting team this year, as they don't need to figure out if Jordan Love is the next Aaron Rodgers, they just need to figure out if Jordan Love is the next franchise quarterback. The defense has been playing as advertised, as well as the pass catchers, the offensive line has been good, the running game has been good, everything's been fine. Now Jordan Love needs to take the next step up. I'm not saying Jordan Love has been playing bad. He's been playing good. I just think he needs to play a little better for this Green Bay Packers team to be a contender. Can we trust him yet? Only time will tell. He has a real test coming up this week as he plays a pretty talented pass group. For this game, I think the visitor takes the crown here. Give me New Orleans 21 to 14, getting the upset and going under the point total. Denver travels out to Miami this week, being six and a half point underdogs with an over under set at 48 and a half. The Broncos are struggling right now, starting the season 0 and 2. Miami cannot say the same as they have started the year 2 and 0 with two pretty dominating wins. Denver is an interesting team. All of a the sudden, their script has flipped. Last season, they had a good defense and a bad offense, and now they have a good offense and a bad defense. With that not so good defense, the pass rush has been not so good, the pass coverage has been pretty bad outside of Pat Sertan, and the run defense is the best part of the defense and they're just average. So now, defensive coordinator Vance Joseph is on the hottest seat of his career, which is weird to say since he got fired being a head coach for Denver. Keep in mind, it's only week three. Miami doesn't really have a question mark here, but they should be on upset watch anyways. Why? Their defense has not been as good as I thought. Their week one matchup against the LA Chargers was pretty good, but they dominated on offense. And with how efficient Denver's offense has been, they could put up the same amount of points the Chargers did. But with how inefficient the defense has been, Miami shouldn't be in too big of trouble. Give me Miami 38 to 24 in this one, covering the spread and going over the point total. Even though the lock of the week only goes towards point spread, if I was to do a prop for lock of the week, it would be going over the point total. So put that down. Moving into the late slate of afternoon games, we have Carolina traveling to Seattle to play the Seahawks. Seattle's favored by six and a half points and the over under is set at 42. Carolina is currently 0-2 with a disappointing offense, especially the surround sound not giving their rookie quarterback any help. Seattle just got their first win of the season with an overtime win over Detroit. Carolina's offense has heavily struggled these first two weeks. Miles Sanders has been fine, but they can't run if they're constantly fighting from behind. So Bryce Young is the X factor here. His surround sound has not been great. The only one I've actually liked so far this year is Hayden Hurst, which feels so weird to say. Given that they have Adam Thielen, Jonathan Mingo, LaVisca Chenault, they have all these targets. BY needs to find a way to improve his game in order to get this Carolina team in contention. The Seahawks also have a question regarding their quarterback. Last week, I asked if Geno Smith was still the same quarterback. This week, I'm asking a different question after he dominated in week two. Can he continue his momentum now? He obviously has the surround sound, now he just needs the consistent performance. There is a big chance that Bryce Young doesn't play and Andy Dalton gets the start. I still think the score stays the same no matter who plays, and that is a 26-17 win for Seattle. They cover the spread and go just over the point total. The Chicago Bears head out to Kansas City to play the biggest favorites of the season. 
but they're tied and I'll explain that in the next game. The Chiefs are favored by 12 and a half points, which is crazy. Chicago's just struggling as a franchise right now, as we've seen in the last couple of days. On the other hand, Kansas City is currently one and one and coming off of a Super Bowl win. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Chicago just needs to keep this as close as possible as they're outmatched almost everywhere. I think that they outmatch the Chiefs in wide receiver room, linebacker room, and safety room. And that's it. So I have to wonder if we'll see the Chiefs backups on their side of things. Will Blaine Gabbert throw a touchdown? I said I'd keep this short, and I did. The Chiefs win this one 42-17 obviously covering the spread and going over the point total. This game is my lock of the week. Uh, why all these boring games, man? Why are the two most boring games in the slate? What is life? What is the NFL? Dallas is favored to beat Arizona by 12 and a half points and the over under is set at 42 and a half. So basically they don't think Arizona is going to do jack shit. Straightforward. This game will be another blowout, but not as much as the Bears and Chiefs. Are you surprised? They actually have a genuine storyline for both of these teams. For Dallas, Dak Prescott's been fiending on receiver play. His tight ends have gotten in the end zone twice, but have six receptions combined on 12 targets combined. So I gotta ask if they will be involved here with this somewhat terrible linebacker play so far this year, or will Dak just continue to throw deep to his wide receivers and then get the running game going and the tight ends just won't get involved again? On Arizona's end, will anyone on defense even have a good game? The pass rush has been fine but everywhere else on defense has just been mediocre. Maybe we will see backups in this game. This game is another easy pick as I have Dallas beating Arizona 35 to 14, covering the spread and going over the point total. Finally, an entertaining game as we get Pittsburgh visiting Las Vegas. The Raiders are favored by two and a half points and the over under set at 43. This game will be close, so stay tuned. Pittsburgh took a proving win over Cleveland, as they're not all made up of a 23-point loss to San Francisco. They have life again. It was just a week one overreaction. As for Vegas, they did get demolished by Buffalo, but they still stand strong at one and one. Pittsburgh is obviously bipolar. They lost to a San Francisco team 30 to seven, and then proceeded to go into another competitive game and win by four points. I'm now going into this game wondering if Pittsburgh's going to be competitive or if they're not even going to have a shot. I'm now going into this game wondering if Pittsburgh will win or if Pittsburgh's even going to have a shot at the win. Even then, it's a borderline 6-11 team in the Las Vegas Raiders, so they will probably hang in there. For Vegas, they're looking towards Jimmy Garoppolo and if he can make this team a playoff contender. Their defense has very much struggled, especially in the run, and they're having issues with personnel as well. The offense, on the other hand, they look fine, so maybe this team will be okay. They just need Jimmy G to play well. This overall offense was good in Week 1 and bad in Week 2. Won't you look at that, Jimmy G played good in week one and bad in week two, so it makes sense why the offense coincides with Jimmy G. So in my opinion, this is a close call, but I'm going against the odds. Give me Pittsburgh 27 to 21, getting the upset and going over the point total. The two Monday night football games have arrived. First off is the game of the week. Philly goes into Tampa as four and a half point favorites and an over under set at 46. Philly is coming off their second win of the season, beating Minnesota in prime time. Tampa is also coming off their second win of the season, beating another NFC North opponent, this time Chicago in dominant fashion. The Eagles have an interesting offense here. Jalen Hurts, in my opinion, has not been playing up to expectations, and this offense overall just dropped 34 points on a not-so-good Minnesota defense. The run game has been helpful, with a dominant performance from DeAndre Swift and an okay performance from Kenneth Gainwell in Week 1. With good blocking, this offense is definitely good. Now they face off against the toughest defense they've faced all year as they go to play Tampa. Now for the Buccaneers, I have a genuine question about these linebackers. Devin White was elite in week one, but kinda sucked in week two. Levante David has not had a good game yet this year. What happened to this top linebacker core? In run defense, they don't have a tough matchup particularly, but they're better off in coverage. They now must face Dallas Goddard, one of the best tight ends in the NFL, and in my opinion, the third best tight end over Mark Andrews. So this game, in my opinion, is the game of the week. I say that because this game is gonna be competitive and it's gonna be close. 
I have Philly taking this one 27 to 24. They don't cover the spread as Tampa gets that part, but they also go over the point total. To wrap up this video, the Rams are going out to Cincinnati. The Bengals are favored by three points and the over under sits at 43 and a half. The Rams have been impressing me this season as they are one and one so far. Their only loss being against the best team in the league. Bengals, on the other hand, are 0-2 to start the season. As I just said, the Rams have impressed me this season, particularly the defense. The offense hasn't shocked me too much as Matthew Stafford is finally back to his golden days. This offense is not great by any means, but if they want to continue to compete, Matt Stafford needs to continue his play. As for the Bengals offense, they need to play so much better. Burrow has not been playing at Burrow-esque level, and neither has his surround sound. The passing attack is intriguing for this matchup. I did say the Rams secondary was the best part of the defense in week one, but they took a step backwards in week two. So if Cincy's passing attack can get it back together, which I expect, they should win this game in dominant fashion. I think their passing attack starts to connect in this matchup, but I don't think it'll be dominating. Give me the Cincinnati Bengals by a score of 31 to 24, covering the spread and going over the point total. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Every week I have a weekly preview episode and a winner's losers episode, so if you're not subscribed, you're missing out. Once again, I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and thank you guys so much for choosing this channel as your source of sports coverage. 